Biz de Sayın Kamil Başaran'a çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Sahneye davet Thank edeceğim you, kişi Profesör Doktor Christoph Stürgerberger, Director and Founder of GlobalEthics.net and Professor of Ethics at University Basel, Switzerland. Good morning. Thank you very much for this invitation. It's my real honor and pleasure to be as Global Ethics Net, a partner of Tate Turkey and together with UNDP. This is a big chance of cooperation and especially thank also the General Secretary of Tate where we started cooperation last year. I would like to show a few slides in my opening remarks on the positioning of ethics in business and also with a concrete proposal. Can I have the first slide? With a concrete positioning of the ethics in the international standardization field. I call it from AAA to EEE and I will explain what it means. I'd like to do it in a few uh, introductory remarks on global trends in sustainability and CSR, on AAA, on EEE as I call it, it's a new invention, on the champion role of Turkey and a few slides about Global Six Net activities and how we can cooperate in that respect. Global trends in sustainability and CSR. It is encouraging to see that this is something going on in a few years very rapidly. We have terminology trends. I want to start with that. You are familiar with terms like CSR, corporate social responsibility, but there are many other terms like corporate responsibility, corporate sustainability, socially responsible investments, fair trade, ethical trade, business ethics, and that leads also to some confusion, but also each term has its own value and wants to express a specific um, aspect. For example, when we talk about transparency, then it, we highlight the transparency aspect or the accountability aspect. So it's not an either or, but we have to define what we want to say in ethical terms, which aspect we highlight. The same is true on the value trends. What are the values behind these terms and these trends? And if you look at the last uh, 50 years since the 60s to today, we see that each generation, each decade also highlights, sorry, highlights some uh, values. For example, uh, 60 to 70 was the development decade, the first UN development decade after independence of the colonies. Then came the growth debate with the um, uh, Rio, uh, no, with the uh, Club of Rome report, uh, limits to growth. Then the CSR and transparency term came up. Then, of course, the whole liberalization of the markets in the 90s, the whole freedom for uh, for free markets 
uh, call. Then uh, the sustainability aspect, uh, together with climate change, came into forefront, and new capitalism now since the 2007-8 crisis, the whole question of the system itself is at stake. Uh, how do we reorient our economy as such, not just the small sector? And then, of course, what we will hear, especially in the panel this afternoon, the whole trust issue. A deep the trust crisis, which leads to that trust and integrity value in forefront. Then we also see uh, developments in, the, in terms of, of uh, reporting trends, and I would call it from fragmented to integrated. Financial reporting is, of course, since a long time very important and remains important. Environmental reporting then was uh, taken up, social reporting, and more and more companies suffer under this uh, diversity, and they say, yeah, we have to deliver the social report and the financial and the sustainability report, and how can we manage all that reporting requirements? This is a constant uh, uh, issue that we are confronted in our dialogues with, with uh, with, uh, the, uh, with, our, with the companies. Now, sustainability reporting, GRI, for example, was an important step on that, and I'm happy uh, to welcome uh, Teodorina Lesidrenska, our staff. Maybe you can uh, stand up. Um, she, Dr. Lesidrenska, she was one of the founders of GRI and uh, still very active in this global reporting initiative. And she's now working with Global Ethics Net with me in, in Geneva. And the next step now is the integrated reporting. I was um, elected, appointed um, two months ago to the IARC Integrated Reporting Council on a global level, which is a new framework which just starts now. Uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, um, the framework was launched to be discussed worldwide, um, and uh, this is shows the trend in reporting. And all that is part of, I think, the, the efforts of Tate and the others. Now, I would like to come to one standard which is very well known, uh, the so-called AAA. Um, this is uh, just uh, an advert uh, of somebody who used, uh, I mean, AAA stands for top. We are top. We are top rated and now um, uh, selling socks or shoes or whatever, top rated. Um, what is behind that standard? It is a standard for investors, as you know, uh, you know better than I, about the creditworthiness of a debtor, especially a business, but also com uh, governments. So there is a corporate credit rating, the sovereign credit rating, long-term rating, short-term rating, different systems. And you see here uh, the, uh, these rating systems uh, which uh, are differentiated and the, the three main rating companies, Moody's, S&P and Fitch, which uh, set the standard and have a huge power in the world, as we know. The stock market is listening to these ratings very uh, clearly, not only for the private sector, but also for if uh, Greece is downgraded, if France is downgraded, that has a huge impact So this is a most, one of the most powerful standards in the world. But the question is, what is behind? What are the criteria? And is it really reflecting what we are discussing? Is the sustainability aspect, for example, sufficient rating? Is it mainly financial rating, which is it wants to be and is? And how to um, replace that? Uh, so there was a lot of criticism against this rating, um, especially with the crisis. Why did uh, the, the big three rating uh, companies rate uh, Russian uh, companies and the triple A? I did not see that what is behind. So that led to a deep crisis in the rating and to the need for alternatives. And uh, uh, in red, uh, conclusion, 
just to make it free, AAA needs to be replaced by a more holistic rating of companies' environments, including the economic, social, and environmental performance of the company or country. Because of this huge influence and because of this crisis of trust, we don't trust AAA. What is behind AAA if it does not discover the profound uh, crisis which can be, be behind that. So if you can't trust a rating, uh, then it becomes uh, difficult. Now, what I try to propose is now a rating which would be based on a triple E, I call it, ethics, economy, ecology. You see the brown part would be, the, so to say, the old AAA system where financial performance is in forefront, which of course remains very important. We cannot talk about sustainability if a company is collapsing. So financial stability remains important, but it's more integrated in a holistic thinking of a triangle ethics, ecology, economy. What does that mean? Uh, in terms of ethics, we have to think about what are the core values. Ethics is value-oriented behavior. We could say non-ethical is if you behave based on just opportunities or um, opportunism are based on pure power. You don't care about your values. The only value you have is to get power and to increase your power, whatever values you then use. Uh, but ethics means to behave based on some convictions or values like um, fairness, performance, efficiency, sustainability, freedom, responsibility, which was already mentioned, and so on. Or we can also mention core virtues, like honesty, transparency, integrity, modesty, compassion. These are virtues. There is a close relation between values and virtues. And this then leads to ecology. So, ecology, sustainability, these are terms which, of course, have discussed for hours about it. But to make it short, the classical triangle of sustainability uh, includes the environmental, the social and economic dimension. And what I would like to support proposed to add is the cultural and religious dimension of sustainability and environmental uh, uh, sound behavior. Because we all know that culture is an important factor, driver, or an obstacle to innovation, to change, uh, as well as religion. So in order to think holistically, we should think in these five dimension. And then we beş, come to the uh, economy, um, the part, uh, of course we can uh, discuss a lot and we will have a chance afterwards on the panel, uh, the first panel this morning. So, uh, in order to get a, a picture of the real value of uh, of a company, we cannot measure only one or the other a part of this company or of a country or of an institution or also of an NGO. We can also rate NGOs according to their uh, the triangle. I think we can also then develop standards which and incentives. For example, in India I was invited to a CSR uh, World Conference in Mumbai in February and they uh, launched uh, CSR awards. So they uh, awarded companies, Indian companies, and it's interesting you see male and female entrepreneurs here in the picture. Uh, they gave CSR awards. Uh, why not think of EEE? Kurumsal sosyal sorumluluk ödül ödülleri aldılar. Gelecekte EEE ödülü de alabilirler bence. Neden olmasın? Business, yani uh, on these aspects. E, işletmenizi bu hususlar üzerinde odaklıyorsanız eğer EEE ödülü de alabilirsiniz. Türkiye'nin rolü meselesine gelecek olursam Türk olmayan birisi olarak tabii 
e, konuşuyorum. E, gözlemlerimi paylaşmak, biraz da umutlarımı paylaşmak adına konuşacağım. Benim vizyonum şu, Türkiye ve Tate önemli bir oyuncu, bir şampiyon olabilir, lider olabilir. Etik iş yapma biçimlerini ve iş etiğini Orta Doğu'da, Doğu ve Batı'da bir araya getirmek ve köprü vazifesi görmek için. E, Kuzey Afrika, Sahra Altı Afrikası ve dünyanın pek çok bölgesinde önemli bir yatırımcı Türkiye. O bakımdan zaten şu anda önemli bir rol oynuyor, gelecekte de oynayacaktır diye düşünüyorum. Ben buna inanıyorum. Ayrıca Türkiye'nin özel bir özelliği de var, belki sorumluluğu da var onunla beraber gelen. Diğer BRIC, BRICS ülkeleriyle beraber ki bence Türkiye'de BRICS ülkeleri grubuna dahil, yani gelişmekte olan ülkeler grubuna, fiyatalar grubuna dahil. Bunların arasında bir koordinasyon ve köprü vazifesi kurabilir. Ayrıca bütün işletme okullarında ve üniversitelerde iş etiğini zorunlu ders haline getirebilir. Bu eğitim alanından Bilal yine konuşabiliriz tabii ki. E, kurumsal sosyal sorumluluk mevzuatı e, ve e, mevzuatın uygulanması kapasitesi meseleleri de önemli. Özellikle de yolsuzlukla başa çıkma bağlamında. Türkiye'nin bunlar rol oynayabileceği alanlar. Şimdi de e, Global Ethics Net'ten bahsetmek istiyorum. Bir global ağız biz. E, birkaç yıl önce kurdum ben bunu. Merkeziniz Cenevre'de ve iş ettiği üzerinde e, çalışıyoruz. Gördüğünüz gibi çok kültürlü, çok dilli bir şekilde çalışıyoruz. E, network'ümüzde, ağımızda farklı kıtalardan üyeler var. Herkes kendi kültürel değerlerini ve dilini beraberinde getiriyor. Endonezya'da ee, etika biznes var mesela, Rusya var, Hint, Çin, Çinli, İspanyol kurumlar var. We are a network of almost 80,000 now. Yaklaşık 80 bin katılımcımız var ağımızda. Ethics News with Ethics News bizim başta olmak üzere herkesle bilgi paylaştığımız farklı platformlardan bir tanesi. Şimdi katılımcıları arayabiliyorsunuz, ülke bazında arayabiliyorsunuz bu ekranda gördüğünüz gibi. Çünkü dediğim gibi on binlerce katılımcımız var. Türkiye bazında arama yaparsanız görürsünüz ki Türkiye'den 500 katılımcımız var. Ve burada mesela listeye bakalım. Burada bir yazılım firmasının yöneticisi var. İlk birinci sırada listede. Dolayısıyla bu katılımlarla TEİT'le de diğer ortaklarımızla yani UNDP, yani Birleşmiş Milletler Kalkınma Fonu gibi herkesle ortak bir sinerji oluşturma gücümüz var. Bir kitaplığımız var. Çünkü bir kaynak bütünü sağlama, referans bütününü sağlamaya çalışıyoruz. O yüzden üniversiteler, öğrenciler, hocalar isterlerse kolay erişim sağlayabiliyorlar. Böyle bir erişim kütüphanemiz var. Ve Türkçe'de belki bunu yapabiliriz. Örneğin kurumsal sosyal sorumluluğu Hindistan'da aratırsanız ya da diyelim Türkiye için aradınız. İşte 400 küsur makale buluyorsunuz. Ve makale Ailelerin tamamını görüp ücretsiz olarak download edebiliyorsunuz. Then we have also many other activities on business ethics. İş etiğiyle ilgili başka faaliyetlerimiz de var. Web sitemizde bulabilirsiniz bunları. Doktor Lesa Duranska sorumlu bu programdan Global Ethics Net bünyesinde. Yeah, one one. Online çalışma gruplarımız da var ayrıca. Dolayısıyla Hindistan'da, Güney Afrika'da, Fransa'da, Amerika'da ya da her nerede olursa olsun bazı uzmanların görüşlerinden yararlanabiliyorsunuz. Belli konu başlıkları altında araştırma grupları, çalışma grupları kuruyoruz. Mesela çok kültürlü personel işe alma guideline'ı. Bu bir çalışma grubu başlıyor. Bu sadece yabancı yani çok uluslu firmalar için değil yerli firmalar için de önemli olmaya başladı. Ve son olarak da 
Ee, yine çok önemli bir başka çalışmamız da Global Etik Forumu. Bir sonraki forum Hindistan'ın Bangalore kentinde yapılacak. 3-5 Ocak 2014'te. Umarız bazılarınızı orada görebiliriz. Zaten teyitli yakın bir işbirliği o bağlam içinde planladık ve umarız buradaki bazı şirketlerle de işbirliği yapabiliriz bu forum kapsamında. Evet, kısa bir giriş yapmaya çalıştım faaliyetlerimize. Dinlediğiniz için teşekkür ediyorum.